Good luck. Merhabalar arkadaşlar, hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Bugün Polonya'dan, Polonya'nın en büyük teknik üniversitesi Bionstock University of Technology'yi ağırlıyoruz. Arthur Mazur bizlerle birlikte. Bizi programlar, başvuru koşulları, Polonya'da yaşam gibi konularda bilgilendirecek. Sorularınız olduğunda questions bölümü hemen sağ taraftaki questions bölümüne yazabilirsiniz. E, Arthur'un sunumu bittikten sonra soruları yanıtlıyor olacağız. Herkese güzel bir webinar olsun. Yes, stage is yours Arthur. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone today. Um, it is my second webinar uh, this season with IEFT. My name is Arthur Mazur. Uh, I'm an ad international admissions officer from Bielostok University of Technology. And today I would like to remind those of you who attended uh, my first webinar and tell uh, to those who uh, are here today for the first time about our university, about uh, opportunities offered by the university to our candidates, to our students, Mm, and perhaps uh, some more information that, uh, in my opinion, is needed uh, when applying to our university. All right. So let's let's start with with my presentation. So as I previously mentioned, I'm from Bielostok University of Technology. Here is the uh, the full name of the university. Mm, for those of you who mm, are not aware where our country is located, so it's located in uh, mid-Europe. And here exactly, as we have um, Germany on the left, Ukraine, Belarus, um, Lithuania on the right, and Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia uh, at the bottom. Um, so now that you know, I think that we can move to our city. Uh, no, not to our city, but to um, to the reasons um, why you should study in our country and choose our city and Bielostok University of Technology as your studying destination. So first of all, let's start with the country itself. Um, one may think, why is it worth studying in Poland? So there are three points, three main points uh, that, in my opinion, um, are like enough, uh, good enough reasons uh, to start your studies in Poland. So you are studying actually in the center of Europe. Um, you can earn a diploma that will open up doors to the best companies in Europe and some of the best in the world, actually. While studying in Poland, you have access to the European Union study programs and you are able to do internships or trainships abroad anywhere in the European Union. And at the same time, uh, while still having a European Union standards, we offer lower tuition fees. Second point, it's ideal for a student on a budget. So this is what, I, what I've just mentioned, low tuition fees. So if you dream of going abroad and becoming independent while studying, you shouldn't be worried about the cost. Because Poland is ideal um, place for a student on a tight budget, not only obviously, but um, but especially for those on a tight budget. Um, dormitories start from, for example, in our city, from 90 euro per month per student. Mm, for example, cinema ticket is three euros. A lunch in the cafeteria starts from just two and a half euro. Mm, so um, you won't spend that much money here. Uh, third point, uh, and actually it's quite important in my opinion for all the students, because all the studies um, conducted lead to then getting a job, right? So we, uh, I think we can say that we can offer great career opportunities. Uh, and actually, you know, studying in Poland is just the beginning, because those wanting to start their own business or find a great, a great job in an international company, it would benefit from a longer stay, actually. Foreign companies operating in Poland often prefer graduates from, from Polish universities, actually. So not from abroad, but from Polish universities. So uh, 
I believe that you would get uh, lots of job opportunities. And it is a fact that most of our students uh, find a job in their profession within a year after graduating uh, from, the, from the university. I want to mention um, uh, Bialystok itself, right? So um, not only Poland in general, but Bialystok itself. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you a few things about the city. Uh, so it's the largest city in northeastern Poland, the largest in the region, uh, and it's the capital of uh, Podolaskie Voidvoidship. I don't know if you know what this term means, but uh, it's a region of Poland. Um, there are around 300,000 inhabitants. Um, the distance from the capital city, which is Warsaw, is... 188 kilometers, so not even 200 kilometers. We have a really good train connection with the airport. So when you get off your plane, you just hop into a train and it takes about 90 minutes to get to Bialystok. So it's not far. The connection is, is really good. And uh, moreover, we are called Green Lungs of Poland. What does it mean, Green Lungs of Poland? we are the, the green part of Poland on the map. So it means that we have lots of parks, lots of green areas, lots of forests. You can find even a few parks, a few, a few really beautiful parks here in the city. So after getting, um, after finishing um, your classes, you can relax in the many green, green areas in the city with lots of fountains and other, uh, and other tourist attractions. Um, in our city, there are three uh, major higher educational institutions. So um, it's Bialystok University of Technology, a uh, technical university, University of Bialystok, they mainly deal in humanities, and Medical University of Bialystok. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we can move to the most important part of the presentation, I mean, educating students or educating you guys, our um, future students and, and candidates at the moment. Uh, the thing that you should know is that the university um, supports the implementation of projects created by, by members of student research groups. In our university, there are over 60 uh, student research groups. Uh, they are... Uh, really rich source of new ideas even to those who work here for many years uh, it's like just fresh look on uh, on certain uh, on certain uh, problems issues and these uh, this um, community student community after being appropriately strengthened by the university i mean when the uni when the university helps students uh, in uh, their development, students, um, it can be noticed quite uh, quite often that they can uh, they can function re really well in the economic system. Um, so they get they learn organizational skills as well as the principles of working in groups and engineering responsibility. Uh, later, I'll just give you a few examples of some of the students that uh, we as the university can boast with and uh, they have managed to create really big things and they are even known all over the world and some fields of studies so uh first of which who would we like to start okay hyperion team okay so hyperion team um, is a group of students from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering of our university that have been building Mars rover analogs since uh, 2010. Actually, so far they have constructed um, six or seven, I think, uh, of them, because every year or every two years they, they create um, a new Mars rover analog. So it's, um, you know, it's a vehicle that can move uh, on Mars, right? So the one that is actually there at the moment, I'm not sure if it's theirs, but basically uh, you get the idea of what the, of what the machine is. So uh, 
a few years ago, they completed the prestigious university rover challenge uh, in the USA. Actually, they competed uh, uh, in it five times and they won the competition three times. So it wouldn't be possible without uh, the support from the university, right? Um, so these are the opportunities uh, I was talking about earlier. Mm, okay, next team led by our uh, former student, Petros Psyllas, uh, the team called uh, Psylosoft, they presented their Matya system. Okay, Matya system is some kind of, um, of, a, of, of a glove, right, with, with a device that can compensate for uh, the loss of sight. So at, actually it describes objects in front, um, in front of its user. So it's a really, really, really useful tool for the blind. Mm. Last in this slide, but not least, are our students uh, from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. Mm. They got a second prize in the prestigious International Contest of Applications in Nanomicro Technology. It was an event held in, um, in Japanese city of Sendai. Mm -hmm. uh, this system is used for monitoring the uh, natural environment uh, with the use of wireless teleinformatic system. Two more, okay? I don't want to bore you too much. Uh, I hope that you find it a bit interesting, at least. Uh, so our two, uh, two teams, two more teams from the faculties, two teams of our students are Cerebral Motorsport, so uh, these gentlemen are from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, again, and they are developing uh, a car that competed in many editions of the Formula Student. Mm -hmm. um, and actually they raced with teams from around the world on the tracks in the UK, Italy, uh, Czech Republic or, or Hungary. Um, they've created a few bolides so far, and yeah, the last, last but not least, is a robot, as you can see. Uh, it's designed for children and it helps them to, to develop and it teaches them the basics of the programming. Um, the, author, the authors of the project set up their own business a few years ago when they were our students. And since then, uh, uh, their robot has won several awards. It got, for example, uh, the best product packaging of 2017, best product design in the same year, 2017. And after a year or two, um, it got the best Polish market implementation and even the toy of the year. Uh, we are, I mean, Bielostok University of Technology is the subject partner of the project and we support we support our former students uh, in their efforts all right but i'm telling you about all those um, things that our students make and uh, about the opportunities but perhaps we should we should get some real uh, students opinions so um I, I have a short video for you that I would like to display, I'd like you to see. Uh, it is a video with our students telling about the, um, the university and about opportunities and about their experience here at the university. But before we move to the video, before we move to the video... Okay. Sorry, Arthur, go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Before we move to the video, I've got just uh, just a few words, a few words to say. Okay, um, international students um, often agree that um, that Poland um, provides some of the best higher education in Europe. Right? It isn't that uh, it's only uh, my opinion for the university, but it's the opinion of students. Um, more than seven, from what I remember, more than 7,000 students shared their reviews uh, on their study abroad experience on the world's largest database. It is called uh, stexx.eu. And from these reviews, um, 
a total of um, 325 students commented on what it was like to study in Poland and rated the country, wait for it, an overall score of 9 out of 10. So it ranked our country um, among five best places to study in Europe, right? Okay, but uh, just to cut the long story short, let's hear uh, the students' opinions on our university and on their studying. My name is Yevgenia, I'm from Belarus. My name is Raman Ursa, I'm from Nepal. Hi, my name is Vakas and I'm from Pakistan. My name is Tansel, I'm from Turkey. Hi, my name is Muratiri, I'm from Zambia. My name is Khurem, I'm from Pakistan. My name is Servando Herrera Suazo, I come from Cuba. Hi, my name is Artem Kamarov, I'm from Ukraine, Kyiv, and I'm studying environmental engineering. I think Bielstok is, is really a nice place to stay and highly develop for the international students. Bielstok was the best opportunity because it's only 500 kilometers from my hometown and uh, the quality of education is pretty good here and the prices are not high, so it is the best choice for me. It's also cheaper than compared to other, other European countries. Bielstok, you know well than me, that is, a, is known as Green Lungs of Poland. It's easy to me to travel home. I travel a lot by bus and sometimes even by plane. It's more comfortable. We have very good uh, connection by train or by buses and I go uh, once per month. Poland is great because before I was in China and the experience there was okay, but you say, come on, move, move out to Europe, it's better. And the education system is, is just great. It's better than where you are, so I can. I met my wife through internet and I arrived here to, in 2008, so I'm living in Białystok for nine years. In my point of view, uh, Poland is the heart of Europe. Just because they have a rich uh, history, cultural heritage, Poland is now the largest in Central uh, Europe, it's the largest economy in the Central Europe and uh, sixth in the European Union. Before I had not so much idea about the Polish people, but after coming to Poland, I feel they are quite helpful and better. At first, I was a little bit skeptical about it, but now that I'm here, it's more than I expected. Infrastructure in Bialystok is quite good. I'm especially impressed by uh, bicycle infrastructure. They have uh, lots of uh, bicycle roads that are, uh, have really good connection. I mostly use the buses. And they are pretty good, like we can see the table in the time and exactly they are on the time. Even if I'm not uh, going to some party or something like that, I'm always going to the city and I'm enjoying my swimming. It's free for me because I'm a student of Biverstock University. The campus is very good equipped and uh, I like the, the most uh, the integrity of the faculties and also the good contact that the students uh, can catch with the teachers and Bill Stock University of Technology campus. We have a sports facilities, sports halls, a gym, and even we have student clubs that are really wonderful. The thing that I like most is the academic incubator in the main campus. It is really something that has surprised me. About classes, I like best of all that uh, they have very good practical orientation. Teachers do not require our bookish knowledge. Yeah, of course, our projects suppose that we should know something, but they need practical implementation, and this is the main thing for me. Most of the time, teachers are preparing specific presentations for us, and they are very accurate. It's, of course, hard, uh, but uh, I like hard, actually. The otherwise, if you would like to uh, get some good things from the life, and you should start, otherwise no one uh, doesn't give nothing uh, to you. Compared to Kyiv, Bielista classes are more technologies. The student relationship between a professor and, and us, it's great because you, you get to interact and communicate on a level 
that's just they, they make you feel at home free to ask them about anything you want we have most of the students from Turkey, Portugal and Spain. Also we start to deal with uh, another universities like uh, from international students like Bangladesh, uh, Ukraine, China. My experience at Bialystok University is awesome. It's because it's more than just academic. I want to stay here in Poland and maybe even in Bialystok and I want to open my small business. In the future I would like to stay here in Bialystok because I like the city a lot. After finishing my study, like, I would like to do intensive, like six or one year. If I get the opportunity to stay in Poland, I will. I'm going to be an engineer in Zambia with a Polish degree. Arthur, you are mute. Could you please unmute yourself? Oh, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I muted the microphone so that the video is not disturbed by any other noises, just in case. Uh, thank you for your attention. Mm, so as you can see, these are well, just some of our international students. And you can believe them or not, but they really uh, like it here. And, so uh, so do many other students. Um, all right, I'm pretty sure that uh, in the question section after the webinar, uh, I'll see this question. So <laughs> before I'm uh, before I answer that, uh, I can I can tell you already that uh, yes, the question is: Can international students work in Poland? Yes, they can. Actually, international uh, students don't need working permit. Um, it's obviously important to know that you can legally have a full-time job while studying, right? If it does not interfere your studies, you can have it even full-time. Uh, but yeah, it may be too much, as some of you uh, may suppose, but it's up to you. There is no maximum limit of hours uh, that you can work uh, a week. And one of the greatest one of the greatest things about graduating in, in Poland is that you don't need to apply for a working permit to work in Poland. You can stay in Poland and keep working as long as you wish. Um, another good thing offered by our university is career counseling. So um, what do we help you in? We help you in improving your CV and cover letter and preparation for, for the interview for the job interview, right? So if you're not sure um, if your CV is properly prepared, then we will help you. If the thought of an interview uh, makes you shiver, we will help you to overcome this feeling. If you don't know how to write a cover letter, we will help you as well. And to meet your needs and the current situation um, related to the, to the pandemic, we offer the possibility of um, online consultation uh, with a professional uh, advisor. But it's quite obvious that these, day, um, these days, most of the activities moved um, to the online world. Um, all right, so here you can see the types of studies that are offered um, at the university. It is quite obvious for, for most of you that we offer first degree studies, and second degree studies. Um, in other words, bachelor programs and, and master programs. Um, but we offer third degree studies, so doctoral studies as well. Uh, and one more kind of students can, uh, can study here. These are non-degree studies, so-called so -called free movers. And they can uh, come here to the university and study and, and pick subjects from you know from different faculties actually so they're like Erasmus students but unfortunately without an Erasmus plus grant right so they pay for their studies uh, they come here for for example for for one semester right or two semesters 
and they pay for their study. But the good thing about um, this option is that they can choose any subjects they want. Uh, so they can choose, let's say, uh, two from the Faculty of Civil Engineering, three from the Faculty of um, Environmental Engineering, and some from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. So it's it's up to them, it's up to you. Uh, you decide what you study. And in our offer, you can find intensive Polish course as well. So if you'd like to speak Polish, uh, which is not actually necessary because all the programs that are in our offer that I will tell you uh, in a minute, tell you about in a minute, uh, all of the programs are taught fully in English. However, if you'd like to learn our language, yes, we do have it in our offer as well. Okay, so now I'd like to show you just a few of the programs that are most popular at the university. So we'll start with um, electrical, uh, electrical and electronic uh, engineering, um, bachelor studies. As you can see um, uh, at the bottom of the slide, uh, 1600 euro is the tuition fee per semester. Actually, it's the, it's the most uh, expensive, it's the most expensive uh, program uh, at the university, actually studying at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering is the most expensive one. Uh, and all other programs and faculties are, are cheaper. Um, masters in management. So you not only can study technical programs, but you can get a um, Master of Arts as well, and you can study management. And the program uh, that we have in our offer is called Smart and Innovative Business. And as you can see, the tuition fee is as low as 1100 euro uh, per semester. Bachelor in Civil Engineering is another program from the Faculty of uh, Civil Engineering and Environmental Sciences with the tuition fee of 1200 euro per semester and masters in civil engineering uh, as you can see the tuition fee is the same um, last but not least is environmental engineering so you can study bachelors for 1250 euro per semester or you can study masters in environmental and engineering um, at our university and the tuition fee is the same as in the previous one and that is 1250 euro per semester mm, you can study as well bachelor in mechatronics for 1250 euro per semester and uh, master as well here you can have the um, full educational offer so we can take a look i think i've just given most of the most of the programs uh, and at least half to, half of them are offered uh, for both bachelor or uh, master students. Okay, the tuition fee that you can see here in the slide is not per semester, but per academic year. So you get the idea of how much uh, how much you you'll spend. All right. So some of you may um, may want to know what are the, the documents needed uh, for application. So secondary school certificate for those applying for bachelor programs and uh, bachelor of science degree with uh, transcript of records for, for those who apply for um, uh, master studies. Actually, um, for one program, for one program which is smart and innovative business, you don't need to have bachelor of science. Um, uh, you can be a holder of bachelor of arts degree, right? But it's the only, the only program. Mm, okay, our application form. So it's a form when you put all your uh, personal details. Now we are working on, implement, uh, on the implementation of a new online system. So for now, it's like the application form that you fill in. But soon, uh, we'll have uh, just a link in our website and you'll just fill in all the personal details there. Mm, eligibility statement is a, is a document issued either by your school or by your university and it states that you're eligible to study uh, either at, uh, as an under, undergraduate student or as a um, uh, graduate, so bachelor or master student. Mm, it can be obtained as well, uh, I believe, depending on the country, uh, at the Ministry of, uh, of Education, for example, right? But I believe that it's a lot easier to get it from your school or from your university. A few things that um, you have to know. 
there's no application fee nothing um, perhaps some some point in the future we will introduce it but for now there is no application fee it is just the tuition fee that you pay and the documents that you submit then you can start your studies and the thing that is not that common in poland and in other countries as well is that you do not need a language certificate it's just it's just the interview actually i am the person uh, conducting the interview and i can assure you that if you speak good english you'll have no problems with um, being admitted to the university we will be just you know checking your i will be checking uh, your um, english speaking skills right and but no no um, specific knowledge in the field of your studies just some general questions right that just to check your your english uh, language skills deadlines the deadline for submitting um, the documents for october intake so for winter semester uh, is august the 15th and we start the application process pretty soon because in in about three weeks from from now and the deadline for summer semester uh, is january the 15th right and the application process starts at the beginning of october all right um as most of the universities we are covid 19 ready so um we have all the hand sanitizer devices and um even the university provided their students with masks some time ago uh, so we can feel safe at the university i can assure you and when it comes to studying and um, covid 19 issues um, for now we have hybrid studies so most of the classes are conducted online but some of the classes uh, laboratories uh, are conducted in person uh, because they are conducted in small groups and uh, there is no risk actually of, of being infected um, so only a, a few people in the laboratory uh, are present so that's why uh, it is possible um, to conduct this kind of classes in person now I would like to, to take a look at our campus Mm, so the buildings that that you can see these five buildings are actually our dormitories mm, they can hold up up to like a few thousand students so um you should you should know um as well that the university has set a priority for international students so you'll always be accommodated in uh, our dormitory if you wish to be of course some of you may prefer to stay in a rented flat somewhere in the city but if you would like to stay in the main campus and um, and stay in one of um, one of our dormitories uh, you are always given such opportunity so the prices start from 80 euro uh, depending on the room uh, so 80 euro 90 euro is for staying in a, in a double room uh single rooms are a bit more expensive but just just a bit um, as you can see the dorms are located in the main campus where there are most of the faculties the one that is in the middle is the faculty of civil engineering and environmental sciences the one on the um top right uh, corner is the faculty of electrical engineering and next to it is the faculty of mechanical engineering uh and so on and so forth um, here you can see our library we're really uh, proud um, of this facility um, it was built a few years ago i think that back in 2014 it is really modern and it was designed by our architects from our university uh, so it's really modern and you can find pretty much anything uh, there uh, what you need uh, for your studies you can um, if you want to study in silence because perhaps for some reasons your roommate does not allow you uh, to study um, in a way that you would like to like in complete silence you can always go to the library there are special rooms for students that you can uh, there's the internet connection there obviously um, and power supply and you can you can stay there as long as you want and and study there obviously with the access 
to uh, to what the library has to offer to our students. Here in the pictures, you can see our um, sports center. So at, as it was mentioned in the video, from what I remember, um, it's open for all the students. So if you want to use the gym anytime, it's free, it's free of charge. So you don't have to go to the gym somewhere in the city and pay for it, right? Erasmus Plus program. So this is an opportunity offered, uh, obviously, by many European universities. And so it is offered uh, by ours uh, as well. Mm. So you can either study or do internship in uh, many European Union countries. Um, you can study for one or for two semesters and get your monthly scholarship. From what I remember, it starts from um, 450 euro um in one in, in some of the uh, european union countries and goes up to around 700 euro uh, in the countries uh, that are not from the, the european union uh, so actually it, it depends on the country that you choose but you get a few hundred euros each month um you can spend 12 months abroad so if you come to Bielostok university of technology um uh, to study and let's say that you are a i don't know undergraduate student you come here for seven semesters so throughout all your studies you can spend 12 months abroad so either uh, studying with erasmus plus program or doing internships that last two or three months all right so in this slide you can see the list of the countries uh, it is not even full, I, I guess. The list of the countries that you can uh, go to and study with Erasmus Plus program. Um, obviously, uh, not only studying, but doing internship is available uh, in all of these countries. So, that will be it. Uh, I think that I've given you all the information needed. I tried uh, to make it brief. Uh, but it took over half an hour, so it wasn't that brief. Uh, but now um, I would like to move uh, to the question section. Um, I'll start with, um, or after the after the presentation, after the question section, I'll just leave uh, in the comments. Uh, I'll leave uh, my email address. You can see it here. It's study at but at pb.edu.pl. So this is the email address uh, you can um, um, use to contact me. And let's move to, to questions. Okay, there are a few questions. So how much could be an estimated average monthly expenditure? Mm -hmm. Right, so um, apart from the tuition fee, let's say that 90 euro is 80, 90 euro is your room in our dormitory. Food, I would say, depending on what you like to eat, right? And uh, whether you often eat out or try to buy something in the groceries and cook for yourself. But it, it's usually something around 100 to 250 euro each month. So depending on, on uh, whether you cook for yourself or not. Public transportation is around 20 euro each month. And basically... That's it. Uh, if you like to party uh, and if you want to attend some clubs, now obviously it's quite difficult, right? Because of the COVID-19 restrictions. However, uh, if the restrictions are eased, uh, club entry is from two to about five euros. And some, some drinks, not necessarily soft, uh, start at around two euros. Mm -hmm. How much are university fees on average? Uh, I showed you a slide with our tuition uh, tuition fee structure. So the tuition fees start from 1,100 euro uh, up to 1,600 euro, right? So 1,100 per semester up to 1,600 euro per semester. What types of programs are offered for international students in English? Uh, we've gone from, uh, through the, um, through the um, course catalogue, uh, so I believe that you already know. How is accommodation prices in Bialystok? Do you offer on-campus dorm option? Thank you. Yes, 
Um, so 80, 90 euro is the price for a, for a double room. And uh, the campus, as uh, you had an opportunity to see, uh, the, the main campus, uh, in the main campus, there are a few faculties and the dormitories. So everything is a walking distance and walking distance is like one or two minutes to your faculty, which is literally nothing. Okay, next question. Do you have Turkish students? Which programs uh, are they apply mostly? Yes, we have, um, most of our Turkish students are Erasmus Plus uh students so uh they're not our full-time students but uh, they're doing their mobilities here uh but the most the most popular mm -hmm. i think perhaps um at least among those uh, full-time students um i think it's civil engineering and uh, the courses from the faculty of engineering management and there are two courses that there are two programs there smart and innovative business and logistics but mechatronics is the program that is um, gaining in popularity. It's becoming more and more popular among international students. Next question. What are the admission requirements for computer engineering? Unfortunately, unfortunately, we do not have it, uh, computer engineering in our offer at present. Uh, as you could see, uh, the courses were listed, the programs were listed. But unfortunately, computer engineering is not there. We're working on that. It's due, mainly due to um, the lack of teachers, of professionals, right? Uh, we offer, obviously, um, computer engineering, computer science uh, for Polish students. It is taught in Polish for Erasmus Plus students, uh, but not yet for international full-time students. But we're working on that, and I'm just hoping that next year we will be able to have it in our offer. What are the postgraduate requirements? Um, we've gone through the requirements already, so I believe that you know. Are all engineering programs English taught? Which level of English do we need minimum? Yes, all the programs presented by me today are taught fully in English. The level of English that you need is around B2. If you're lacking something, you, for example, you're at B1 plus, it'll be fine with us, right? Mm -hmm. However, B1 may be simply too low to be admitted to the university. And remember that there is no, there is no certificate needed, so it is not a requirement. It is an, a requirement in other universities, but we decided to make things easier, uh, to make the whole admission process easier uh, for our candidates, and we decided uh, to... Um, uh, to limit the requirement just to the interview. Let's say we get acceptation from university. Can we work in Poland and can we find scholarship? Okay, at present, unfortunately, we do not offer any scholarship. So there are no scholarship opportunities this year. Uh, but it is a good thing that you can work. As I previously mentioned, you can work full time here in Poland. Uh, if it doesn't collide with your studies, mm, if it's not too much for you, uh, working full-time and studying here, then it's fine with us as well. How is the application process? How many weeks it takes average? Thank you. Um, actually, it, it quite often depends on the student, um, because if a student uh, sends me a complete set of documents, all the documents that are needed, uh, so the whole admission process should take uh, not longer than two weeks. And in this time, you get offer letter um, where you get all the bank account details and you can pay your tuition fee. You get the information about your program. And after that, when all the documents are submitted, uh, in, in the meantime, we have the interview, obviously. And when all the documents are submitted, uh, we just send you the invitation um, a letter to the embassy. And, and that's it. So the, the process takes up to two weeks if everything goes well. Um, and yeah, and now we just, uh, and then we are just waiting for you. And when you arrive, you submit all the original documents or the hard copies right here in the office. You just sign a few documents here. And, and yeah, and you start your studies. It's as, as simple as that. 
Can we get residence permit in Poland after graduation? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You apply for it. Uh, you wait for about two months for the decision, and um, and that's it. How many points we should take in IELTS exam for application? Luckily, it's not a requirement here at the university. You do not need IELTS. It's just uh, it's just the interview with me. Our non-degree programs kind of diploma certificate program. Actually, um, those non-degree programs um, can be treated more as a mobility because you do not get you get a certificate, yeah, but you do not get any diploma, any degree, right? So it's it it is um, mainly for those who are not able to um, to study Erasmus Plus. Um, to study on the Erasmus Plus program, um, and they would like, or perhaps they want to, let's say, mix the subjects in their curricula. Uh, so this offer is is for them. But no, you do not get any diploma and any degree. Are there two or three semesters per year? Actually, depending on the on the level of your studies, but um, master studies. Uh, Master of Science, last three semesters. M Master of Arts, which is the Smart Innovative Business Program, it lasts four semesters. And all other bachelor programs last seven semesters, that is three and a half year. Do you offer conditional offer if we cannot reach required English level? Hmm. Mm. Conditional offer if we cannot reach required English level. Unfortunately, mm, unfortunately not. Mm. Offer letter is issued to those students who successfully go through the interview with me, uh, through the Skype interview, because if the level of your English is insufficient, unfortunately, uh, we will not offer conditional uh, offer letter to those students. So you have to be more or less in the level of English uh, to apply to the university. Uh, we don't have a preparatory English course in our offer yet. We're working on that, but it's not yet available. I want to study American and British studies, bachelor degree can apply for this degree. Um, I think that you should check the offer of uh, University of Bialystok, the Bialystok University of Technology, because our specialization is um, um, are uh, technical studies, and I think that these are humanities, if I'm getting you right. Mm -hmm. Do you have any requirement for minimum GPA? Yes. Uh, sometimes um, faculty uh, faculty coordinators agree to give admission to students with 55% um, five, um, um, GPA, but um, usually it's 60%. Do you provide any grant for students? And if yes, what are the requirements uh, to apply for it? At present, uh, as I previously mentioned, unfortunately not. We do not have any grants. We do not have any scholarship opportunities. Uh, I know it may be a disadvantage. However, on the other on the other hand, um, our tuition uh, fees are really low, and the the fact that you can work full time here, um, I believe, can compensate to the lack of uh, scholarship opportunities. Mm, right, and then there is this question with IELTS score. There is no score uh, requirement because there is no English certificate requirement. Mm -hmm. And that was my last question. Uh, so I would like to thank you for your attention, uh, for participating in, in this event, in this webinar. And I'd like to remind you that at the end of the month, uh, there is one more webinar. Uh, from our, our university, so I strongly recommend uh, you to, to see it, right? So if it's your second webinar um, and you feel that you know everything, you may be surprised because perhaps there, there will be uh, some things uh, that haven't been discussed yet and they'll be discussed uh, in the last webinar from, from our university. So um, once again, I strongly recommend uh, you guys to apply to Bilisic University of Technology, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, that is in September, October 2029.
have a good day and take care. Bye -bye. Yes, thank you very much, Arthur. Uh, also, could you please share an email address on the chat box that the participants who wants to directly contact you? Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation. Uh, Aynı zamanda arkadaşlar size de teşekkür ederiz katıldığınız için. Eğer Bialystok University of Technology ile ilgili diğer sorularınız varsa Arthur'un paylaşmış olduğu mail adresinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda sizi 4'teki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. İyi günler.